Welcome everybody to episode 94 of the ADV podcast. We've got an incredibly serious one for you today. But of course, it's not going to all be serious. We've got a hilarious rap for you. We've got some other stuff coming up. But uh, today's topic is about this phenomenon. It's not a, a once-off case, by the way, but this phenomenon of um, people being chained up in rural China in sort of squalid situations. So we'll be talking about that a little later. No, but... no Alice in Chains jokes. Yes. Django it's... Unchained. Yeah, none of that stuff, please. Um, yeah. I do want to tell everyone, for people that are here for Olympic updates, mm. um, there will be a whole segment uh, at Worldview, on yeah. the Worldview segment. So stay tuned for the whole show. It's a very length, lengthy segment. A lot of stuff to talk about there, so don't worry. Yeah. Um, but first, we're going to get into what's new. Absolutely. So let's jump into what's new, mm. where we talk about what's new in China. There's a whole bunch of stuff. We thought we'd start out with some kind of funny stuff, right? So um, there's this thing that China, China likes to do, and it's this whole propaganda for the camera type thing. All right, you see this a lot. They'll show, oh, look, we're helping the people out, and they'll make a whole big hoo-ha, and they'll show, I know, the PLA sweeping the streets or handing out food packages or something, right? Um, but it's always just a bunch of garbage. It's a farce. It's like that time that boss of mine, remember that whole thing? where he made us line up for the camera that we're all going to donate for the Sichuan earthquake victims, gave us all money to stand in a row as if we're going to put it in a box. They take the photo, and then he came and took all the money back and put it in his pocket. It was that kind of thing. So we've got a little clip here, which I'd like everyone to see. Um, they obviously didn't realize they were being filmed from above, but let's play it. <laughs> okay, wait. So let's go back to that clip very quickly. I don't think we showed the whole thing. Okay. What you've got here is... I don't know. How many people would you say are standing there? Like? Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, maybe 28. Yeah, about 28 people. They're standing in these, like, human chains, passing <clears throat> food packages. This this food parcels, this is for the whole Xi'an lockdown. Remember, there was that whole thing. We're going to be giving out food to, you know, the people. Yeah. Um, yet, if you look clearly... All they could have done is, first of all, um, where they're standing right now is a, is a road, by the way, but never mind that. Oh, it looks like a kind of a flat surface. But look, all they could have done to avoid this entire mess is simply reverse that little truck back a, a couple of meters. Yeah. yeah. You know well, I mean? this shows you exactly why they took this video they yeah. do that they're they're learning though because like before it'd be like a whole camera crew now yeah. they're like let's look like somebody's just happens to be filming this randomly yeah right but yeah like what do you need to have 28 people to pass you don't food need parcel? 28 people to move uh that down there but they they've got like if you look in the beginning the guy right at the the, the front there um is filming right over there yeah right at the the front but you know it's because they can show this and you've seen the clips going around where they show these people handing the food out this massive effort you know oh we're really here to help the people but it's always just a staged ridiculous little thing like this so i do want to touch on something real quick if you go to a supermarket in china you'll yeah. see um i mean i guess in the u.s you would see maybe four people when you're walking around the aisles maybe you might have to run up and be like oh where's this where's this you know yeah. you have to make an effort to go find someone in china there will be i mean i've seen up to seven eight people in one aisle mm. uh, people working there and that's this whole idea that if you employ yeah, very very low wages we're talking under sure. a dollar well under a dollar an hour mm. if you employ people at very low wages but you all give them a job then your unemployment figures are nothing Right. Sure. So it'd be like, oh, look at the unemployment rate in Western Europe compared to China. China employs everybody. Wow. <laughs> but it's just these useless filler positions. It just reminded me of that. Yeah, it's kind of like that. What's up with this picture in the background here? Um, I just love this photo. Mm -hmm. uh, I posted this on Instagram. It's a propaganda billboard that is running a TV program. Yeah. Now you'll see this in China quite often. Our billboard running CCTV or, or state media. I love this one because it's Again, the out-of-touch idea that everywhere needs to be touched by the propaganda brush. Right. And so they 
put how much money into building this massive structure and there's one man sitting on a cinder block watching well, it. I mean, there's not even any infrastructure around no. that block. Like no. not, there's no pavement, no road or anything. They like could that. have built a road. <laughs> well, they I mean, have used that money. remember, I, I've talked about this before, mm. but remember that time we were riding through Guizhou, was it? Guizhou, and we were yeah. going up, there's that like mud, disgusting mud road. Yeah. And there were like people, farmers, like really with those sticks over their back, you know, carrying heavy loads and they're all like, in their 70s and 80s and stuff and it's like it's real like stick huts it's it's, it's like a real awful kind of a uh, a situation you no can see there's so much poverty and there's so much struggle and so much yep. strife but at the top of the hills a massive billboard of xi jinping clapping, clapping. like said and it said like the development is has arrived or yeah, something. something and he's like hmm and it's yeah. just like how insulting must that be for because it the, it looks like like a golem situation like people literally struggling just to make ends meet sure these huts that are burning, you know, wood that they have to go chop down just to stay warm because there's no electricity sure. in some of these. As we stayed in one, mm -hmm. um, it's dire. I mean, it's just mm. they have the budget to erect a massive yes. billboard. That's the priority. They, That's what I'm trying to say. They couldn't, you know, spend that money on roads or infrastructure. That's anyway. the exactly the yeah. same with this, right? Anyway, cool. This guy's so being entertained. That's what that's all about. Yeah. yeah looks like very entertaining you quickly uh you know we have our subreddit which is uh, reddit.com slash r slash adv china um somebody put this fantastic uh chinese ox well he's a together. he's a, a great artist that's done a lot of renditions for us his yeah. uh, i wanted to put his link in the description so it says uh chinese ox artist or whatever yeah click that it says i don't always drink by joe but when i do i sip it from the skulls of my enemies chinese great rendition ox. of chinese ox. oh yeah so we got a couple of things to talk about now. We all remember um, the welcome to Beijing. It's time to give it a go. Do you remember that song? I do. And it had all those white monkeys in it. It had like, uh -huh. it had like John T, you know. Great. That, that John T. Mm -hmm. Okay. Had him in it and stuff. Well, they released another version. Yeah, the newest version got rid of all the white monkeys. It's the same song. <laughs> it's the I, exact same song, but I, they got rid of all of the white people, except there is John T in the background right. as like uh, B-roll, but he didn't sing. Yeah, do you think we had any influence on that? Maybe. I don't know. But they yeah, they got rid of everyone, and they, they whittled it down to this Miranda girl, which yeah. is in this uh, yeah. Xinhua thing, and okay, then so uh, one of her cohorts. Let's let's just play a little bit of it for you here so you can see what we're talking about. Actually, a quick fact. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give you a quick fact about sure. that. Put it back on him. Okay, I'll get back on can. him. Um, I learned something about Jaunty, actually. What did you learn? Um, number one, he's great. He's Yeah, he's great. Uh, number two. He's the fastest man in the world. That's, Don't forget that. That's, you stole it from me. Oh, I learned that actually he is, in fact, the fastest man in the world. <laughs> Nobody can touch me. No, yeah, and it's it's incredible. I, it turns out it wasn't just a dream. He is the fastest <laughs> man in the world. You can, you can tell yeah, as well. Exactly. Anyway, we just thought it was quite hilarious that <clears> although you can see John T in the small clip, that entire song has been redone, but only has two Chinese uh, yeah. women singing it, and all the foreigners have been removed. Yeah. yeah. So weird. Anyway, um... Now we have to get back to the winter games of the winter. You're just really excited about this, eh? Now we all know Cardi C. Um, we remember the Cotton song, Cotton. Did you put that in here? I did. Okay, so for those of you who don't... You to, now I can yell at you. I told you to go through the media pack. I, oh, we're Russian. Okay, we're Russian. <laughs> we're not we're, Russian, no, actually. we're not Russian. I'm no. American. Yeah. So anyway, guys. <laughs> Um, there's this ridiculous propaganda rap and there's a couple of them. Remember she, she did that whole song about like, um, smog is cast away, you know, no pollution. Yeah. So, well, what rap. she's really famous for is her cotton rap. Yeah. So I put it in here. Yeah. Let's quick. take a look quickly. Well, we'll refresh your memories. When it comes up. I see dry and sunshine made it cotton. This work was school, people all in old bottom. You see jobs great, eh, and the fat money men. Here is why now I know how people just like to hate. So can I say something here? Sure. You can put it back on Cardi. I'll, I'll get it back yeah. to Cotton. All right, let's get it back to Cotton. Just get it on Cardi's Oops. maybe her her album cover. Oh yeah, all right, there we go. So Cardi C um is in fact a state employee. Uh, yes. for cgtn so she's uh, you know accused by the propaganda department of the chinese government 
And what she does is she's a she's a pretty good English speaker. She yeah. goes around and she's kind of a handler for some of the. She's foreigners. a handler and a reporter. And a reporter, you know? right? So. Yeah. They use her for genocide denial, this kind of stuff. And she, well, we made her famous when she came out with the cotton rep saying that there's no forced labor in Xinjiang yeah. um, with that horrible rep. And she actually removed the video. Mm. I don't know if it was embarrassment or whatever. If her handler said, hey, you know, they're making fun of you. Take it down. They put it back up. Yes. It now has tons of views. And I've been following her. Like, she's kind of chilled out on the whole propaganda thing she still does it for her job but her normal youtube channel was just full of like cover song songs. covers so right? bad well yeah so i'll bad. leave that up to you guys maybe no no find really it. like so bad like that's the thing um she would release covers of popular <laughs> songs that you yeah. hear in the west or western whatever. songs yeah and she's tone deaf it's all she can't like, sing I, i'm sorry to say sing. like there's a lot of simps saying like oh you're so so beautiful she and can't you sing. sound so good but I think that a, a like a rat with a throat infection has a better chance of getting those notes. I'm just saying, like, because she's she's bad. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm being a bit too harsh, but she's she's terrible when it comes to singing. <laughs> it doesn't mean that she's not a talented or or a sure. decent person, but when it comes to singing, mm. she shouldn't be a singer. Is no. what I'm trying to say. And here's an issue I have yeah. with this: mm -hmm. she's come out with a propaganda song for the Beijing Olympics, which right. we're going to include. We actually found one that's even better. Oh, yes. But we'll save it for the next time. I put a little glimmer. Yes. So you guys get a glimmer. And I'll, I'll tell you why I'm bringing her back up. Remember I said I'd lay off? Mm. The reason I'm not laying off, we said that about the Ghoulie sisters, by the way, and then yeah. China just deleted them. Mm. Um, but anyway, um, I, I was going to lay off because she was just doing these crappy vocal covers. Sure. But then I found out that she is getting way too many opportunities that are being passed. Like they're passing up actual talented people. Yes. to use her instead and i think that's bullshit so she puts out this propaganda song for the mm -hmm. beijing winter olympics yes. and guys if you thought cotton yes was a bop you i you have to just plant yourself down right now Get ready. hold grip tight because this one's it's it's way more cringe than cotton you're gonna die you're gonna die of cringe so yeah. brace yourself all right so we're gonna should we do it all the way through we're gonna just go all the way through what do you think? Well, we'll see. We'll see okay. how it goes. All right, let's do it, guys. So, it'll come in here. We had to blank out the beginning because it's actually just a, a rip off of Frozen. Do you want to yeah. build a snowman? She's got a friend now. Yeah, you see that they they start out with like you say, just a rip off of the Frozen theme song. And right. and you think that okay, it's just a cover of that, but, but it's then not. That's it, just the intro. It's gonna blow your mind. Oh yeah, hang on. Here we go. I don't think you guys are actually ready for this. No, I don't think so either. Do you want to be a snowman? Does it have to be a snowman? I want to ski, ski in snowland. If my body's ready, boss, say, there's just no time to waste. Come here to your wet play. Tick tock, it's just about a time. Snow car in the mountains, and I'll listen in your life. First thing first, try for skiing as a starter. Then we do cross country as a play harder. They do freestyle in their ski. I do a freestyle in my song. Now I <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, know, just, I, I know. Yeah, you have to take it. You have to take yeah, a second. Yeah, bit by we'll, bit. Go, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do the whole thing. We will, but like, you could do freestyle in your ski. I do freestyle in my song. <sighs> yeah, go I, back to that. I love that. I you, just, you know what I really, really like is what? the whole green screen 90s it's effect. amazing because what they're doing is like the camera's moving around but the background's stable so it looks like they're floating around like you know those bad like it's, 90s it's, video toaster stuff i can i know people use this filter on like snapchat and tiktok but it's always it's always done tongue-in-cheek yes. it's like oh here i am and they're like making fun of themselves yeah, this yeah. was used as an effect yes for the chinese state yeah yeah i mean look this by the everyone way everyone is going wild th by this, the way. this is real it's got english and chinese subtitles on it it's oh. official oh it gets better mm -hmm. it's more than just english yeah. and chinese yeah they bring in another language yeah anyway let's get back to it you got to see the rest yeah so play harder they do freestyle in their ski i do a freestyle in my song now i know i don't need to play that winter game so long why don't you come during the only this of february why yeah. don't we have when you keep all the maps necessary go back go back go back Okay. First of all, mm -hmm. why don't you come to the Olympic? Go back to that little part. Yeah. Why don't you go to the Olympic Games this February? Because you can't. Because you can't. Why don't you come to the Olympic? 
you yeah. you can't actually go. They didn't allow people to buy if tickets you and, to go if there. If you right now, or let's say a week or even a month ago, you just like I want to go to the Olympics. Yes. All right, honey, we're going to the Olympics. Let's book our tickets for the travel agent. They're like, no, no, f off. You, you can't even go to China. No, you're just not going to be able no. to do it. It's China closed themselves. Yeah, it's done. So I think we answered a question. Anyway, yeah. let's play more. This is February. Why don't we have fun drinking bottom ups necessary? Why don't we have fun drinking bottoms ups is necessary? It's again, it's using phrases wrong. Yes. Well, you all know in Chinese culture when you get together and uh, gun babe, you, sure. you, you, you drink. Drinking, you know, doing drinking competitions kind of just part of a night out. It anyway, is. It's okay. Which you're not going to be able to do because you can't go to China. No, you can't go. You can't stop as we know decombines. Those shock tracks be skinny and bad, so I'm fine. Do you want to build a snowman? Let's go and play half fun with snowman. <laughs> wait, wait, yeah, wait. Okay, wait. yeah, so. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, have what? fun with no man. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah you're right. You nobody can, can, you can go. You have to be isolated. You can't yeah. like mingle. So yeah. You want to build a snowman? That's, go have fun with no man. That's great. Actually, they'll put you in one of those COVID capsules. Yes. You exactly. put your head out like a horse. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have fun with no man at that point. Yeah. All right. I okay. love that chorus. Let's let's stop breaking this up. Let's, Sorry, let's it's too good. It's too good. Out. Yeah, let's do it. Why don't you come during the Olympics of February? Why don't we have fun drinking bottom ups necessary? Nothing can stop as we know do you wanna build a snowman? Let's go and play half fun with snowman. Do you wanna build a snowman? Doesn't have to be a snowman. We can just ski, ski in snowland. Do you wanna build a snowman? Let's go and play half fun with snowman. Do you wanna build a snowman? Doesn't have to be a snowman. We can just have fun with snowland. Hey. Pause it. Pause it. I just want everyone to get ready. For all of you, I know we have a lot of Spanish-speaking audience. Yeah. Um, I know you guys can also speak English, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But this will be special for you. It'll be close to your heart. Yeah. Like, I, you guys this, need to prepare. This, this, like, this, this pose they struck. I know. Right? It's, Isn't that just it's, amazing? It's in the float. The yeah. floating around the green screen. What's going on there, girls? Figure your shit out. Dude, it's amazing, though. Yeah. What is she wearing? It's like a leopard print <laughs> thing. Oh, she, it looks like a tail of a... Of a of a wolf. Anyway, yeah, let's get let's get into it. Escucha, amigo, amiga, arriba. Deja un lado de problemas. Por este momento vamos a ese juegos orbigos. Terminó el mundo patinaje. Luego vamos a masaje. Y ahora tenemos tiempo. Aquí, aquí, aquí al vino. Van a celebrarlo este febrero. Do you want to build a snowman? Oh, so... Hold on, hold on. I want, I want to check the chat. Yeah. Uh, Spanish speakers, how was that? Because yeah. I, I speak a little Spanish. I don't. But I can read the Chinese subtitles. I'll tell you, in English, that wouldn't have worked. So how did that work in uh, Spanish? Because it seemed kind of sparse to me. It seemed a little bad. Anyway, let's continue. Yeah, everyone's laughing. Yeah. Snowman. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Spanish-speaking yeah. audience. You had to listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> To be a snowman, we can just ski, ski in snowland. Do you want to be the snowman? Let's go and play half fun with snowman. snowman. Yeah. Do you want to be the snowman? Doesn't have to be a snowman. We can just have fun in snowland. See? <gasps> what the fuck? It's what does that mean? Who's that? I'm a little. Hold on, go back. I gotta I think, look that up. I think she said, um, "Is mm. that Yuzuru Hanyu? Is it? That's probably like a a Korean dude." Or Japanese, probably a Japanese dude. Well, obviously Yuzuru is oh, a Japanese. Oh, he's a Japanese figure skater. Okay, all right. Holy shit, he's 117 pounds. Okay, well. <laughs> I mean, that's that's skinny. You know, you know what this reminds me of? And I hate to say this. It's like, um, you know, like, I don't know, 12-year-old girls putting on a fashion show for their parents. Yeah, you stole the you words. Know I mean? You know, But you know what the, my favorite part is? Can you go back right to the beginning? Okay, I'll Don't play the, the frozen part, but like just right at the beginning. All right. It reminds me. Okay, right here. Yeah, so they're like, the way that they're kind of being like, oh, we're so nice, we're so nice. And then it comes in and it's like, oh, yeah? Hey. What the fuck is that? <laughs> right? Like, we are so fucking cool. Yeah, and so it, remind, it reminds me of something I would have done when, I, again, I was 12 years old. I got the VHS recorder out, right? Yeah. And we start singing, like, Mary Had a Little Lamb, right? Or something like that. And they're like, you guys thought we were going to sing such a lame kid song? Yeah. Actually, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what this it's got is. The, it's got those vibes. It's yeah. that vibe. Anyway, so now, like, here's the thing. 
like we've tried to say in the past, she seems fairly harmless. You know, she sings cover songs. Yeah. But actually, she's not harmless. She's very, very high up in the Chinese government. Oh, yeah. That's what we... Okay. And it's scary do, what I found. You, yeah. Do you know how high up she is in the Chinese government? She was um, selected to sing in the most important, most prestigious event of the year in China, which is the New Year Gala. Now... I don't know if anybody really understands how important the New Year Gala is, but everybody in China is almost forced to watch it. There's no one that doesn't watch it in China. So you can imagine over a billion people tune into the New Year Gala every year and they watch. It's like a variety show. It's usually just a bunch of propaganda these days anyway. It's like, look how great we are in China. Look what we've done. And then they have performances, right? She was in that chosen as the best rapper for China. Okay, we got a little clip, and we're going to show that entire uh, gala rap next week. We're not going to show it this time, um, but we've, we've put it in here. Okay, so yeah, let's finish this up. Here. I have the courage of the tiger, strength of the tiger. Yeah. You guys. Mm. I, we're, we decided we decided that we'll save this one for the next one because we were very worried um, that you guys would get Cardi C'd out. Yeah, we can't overdo it, but like this whole... It's I'm, incredible. I'm the, the strength of the tiger, blah, 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 because it's the year of the tiger, yeah, right? Yeah, it's incredible. I have the courage of the tiger, the strength of the tiger. Yeah, this she was... she award She was awarded one of the most prestigious uh, positions for a singer in China. Yeah. To sing in the New Year's it's, Gala. And that's what pisses me off. So what we speculate is that she must be the daughter of some very, very, very high influential up. people in China. Because nobody would have chosen her due to her talent. No. Okay? Absolutely not. There are many very talented rappers and singers in China. Oh, okay? yeah. Thousands. She, she is not one of them. No. Yet she's chosen to sing in the most important show of the entire year in China. Yeah. So... She's, it shows you the nepotism and corruption in China. It, it is. It is. We'll, we'll dive deep into it next time. Yeah, episode. don't worry. It's it's even worse than this snowman thing. In oh, yeah. In many ways, so yeah. it'll be fun. We'll save that for next week. Anyway, we just had to... Uh, Bernie uh, Bernie Mac says, I heard the CIA plays Cardi C music as a torture method. Uh, pff, yeah, I would Probably. expect so. Yeah, ridiculous. What else do we have in What's New? This uh, That's it for What's New, right? Um, yeah, I believe so. Okay, good. Let's do a Super Chat or two. We'll move sure. into our main uh, I'll our do main the ones thing. that started before the show. Yeah. Uh, Joe Yixia says, does anyone, did anyone else see the P uh, People's Republic of China ambassador to the UN, Zhang Jun, make his goofy statements? How dare China weigh in on the affairs of Arctic and Slavic nations? I did see the statements. Yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, Charles won't, oh, by the way, if you're seeing any sort of like Russia, China, Friends Forever propaganda, I saw some people on the subreddit being like, oh no, look, it's happening. It's... I've called this. You're going to see a lot of this for a while, especially a unified approach against the West. Mm. But it's mostly going to be for domestic propaganda sure. to say, hey, we aren't enemy. Like a lot of people, a lot of countries hate Russia and China. Yeah, exactly. So they want this kind of unified image like the uh, we're united at least. So don't worry about those pesky Western nations. Yeah. Uh, Charles Womack says, I'd give uh, the eight dollars and 88 cents I give per Super Chat is partly because of inflation, but also for good luck. Thank, Thank you. you, Charles. Appreciate, Appreciate that. Yeah. And um We'll do one more here. Uh, JUTS says, timestamps are now available in the comment sections for all ADP podcast episodes that haven't been implemented. Oh, haven't wow. already implemented. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll go back and retroactively put it in the descriptions. Uh, Light Seeker says, why don't more white liberals praise Tsai Ing-wen? She's democratically elected and standing up to an actual bully. I, I think I think most people just don't know about yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's, I wouldn't say it's a political thing. I, most people just don't talk about her, period. Yeah. You know, and they should. She's an incredible woman. Yeah, oh, great, great leader. Yeah. Right, guys, now uh, we're moving into soft power hour. This is where we talk about how China changes the way you think and all the things they do through their various media outlets and so on. But we have a very tragic story this week. It's tragic, but it's actually something that needs to be talked about. Yeah. It's actually horrific. This is, uh, we always have this battle, and I, I like to include you guys in on the thought process, but it's like, mm. if you include anecdotal stories or like a one one instance type story, yeah. it kind of looks like, oh, okay, picking out the, the trash, right? Sure. Picking out the bad stuff just to, to hyper-focus on it. But it's good, It's sometimes it's good that some of these stories break because... And to, and to focus on an anecdotal story because it really talks, it lets you talk about a huge problem, yeah. a, an endemic problem sure. that happens across the country. 
All right, so we're talking <clears throat> about this woman here. Now, um, we we actually have a, a person that we know, a Chinese guy's name is China, Uncle Mikey, and he put out a video on his channel, which we thought summed this up great. So we've taken a segment out of it with his permission to show you guys. Yeah, I just wanted to go through an intro a yeah. little bit first. Which we're going to show yeah. you in a minute, so you can get a Chinese person's actual point of view of what's going on here. Because the, the good thing about him is that he does deep dives into all the Chinese media, and he can find, you know, what people are discussing we can find that too but you know the thing is it's uh, qu quicker for him to put it all together so yeah um, so why don't you go through and introduce what all right this is this ridiculous story okay what you're seeing in the background here i'm sure you can notice there's a woman with a padlock around her neck and then there's a picture of a, a healthy young 12 year old girl um and most people are saying it's one and the same person <clears throat> we're going to get into that in a minute but th 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 this story gets absurd now, it started out with this um, this guy who runs like a, a TikTok channel or whatever it is. Was Douyin. It it's Douyin, which is TikTok. Mm. Yeah, you're right. And he's like a rural guy. And he's basically a father of eight is what he calls himself. What is it? Baga ba or something like that? What does he call his, himself? His, his thing? Yeah. Ba hai ba. Ba hai ba. Ba hai ba. So, Means eight, eight child father. Okay, so he's got these eight <laughs> children and he lives in an impoverished place. Okay, it's it's dirty. His kids are like... You well, know, it's just rural China. It's yep. actually not that rural. It's in Shuzhou, which is uh, yep. in northern Jiangsu province. No, the, the reason is, like, the whole point... Actually, I think Uncle Mikey explains this. Yeah, probably. Probably. But th th what happened was people were, you know, following him. He had a lot of followers. They were donating money and clothing and stuff for his family and then uh, a, a do-gooder went out there to go and help him and film like you know film his plight and the plight of his family and while they yeah. were filming this they discovered a woman in a shack in the back of the yeah, you can play it yeah i mean you can see here chained so this to is the organic wall. this is organic yeah. whoa what's going on oh hang on a second something went on here weird just That's give us a strange. second give us a second we got a little thing going on here did you lean on the remote? No, I didn't touch it. That's bizarre. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, we'll, we'll go back. People. We'll go back to that. So we just lost our feed for a second. Discovered this woman in this little like hut, I suppose you'd call it, like a little yeah, without a door on it and stuff. But she was chained to the wall. They've censored the little padlock there, but that's a padlock, and there's a chain around her neck. You can see it, yeah. like <clears throat> she's chained to the wall. Baga hides the mama. Okay. Yeah, and. She was a incoherent, couldn't really speak clearly, obviously suffering from a mental dis disability. And it um, turns out she's the mother of these eight children. Yeah, it says the eight child's mother, eight children's mother. Yeah, so she's the one who pumped out these eight kids. Yeah. So it's a mentally disabled woman chained to a wall that's been basically, I guess, raped over and over to give birth to eight kids. After she was disappeared when she was yeah. 12. But this this is when it gets interesting, is that people started to do searches online because there's this big database it's called uh bao bei hui jia mm -hmm. um which i've talked about in my video about kidnapping and stuff in the past but basically when a child goes missing people <clears throat> post their pictures and like this is my child and etc etc so yeah. people went and actually found somebody who looks who was kidnapped when she was 12 that looks identical yeah right that's what that picture in the beginning was all about um which is just it's it's awful so the synopsis, I mean, what people are expecting happened here is that she was kidnapped when she was 12 mm -hmm. and taken to this village to be used as like a sex slave slash baby producer. Sure. Um, and of course, during the whole process, she was uh, mis mistreated and abused and beaten and stuff, and she developed a mental disability. I'm seeing a lot of people. Um, your mic's low, by the way. Oh, okay. I'm seeing a lot of people in the in the chat. This is interesting. I'm glad you guys are chiming in, but they're freaking out about how crazy it is that a 12-year-old would be kidnapped to use for this. The reason we're bringing this up is because of how prolific this yeah. is. Kidnapping it's insane. Is selling of children that, that have been kidnapped to rural families and yeah stuff. and again I, I hate to bring this up all the time but the park that i live next to had five children kidnapped in one year yeah one year yeah see now this this person who came to help the kids is, <clears throat> is putting on a, a jacket on her because she's so cold and you know he didn't expect to find no, this. It didn't, th this was an unexpected find you know yeah. um and he's like why is there this chain on her type thing right okay so the peop, this is what the netizens have been doing is they've taken screen grabs and they've taken pictures of the kidnapped 12 year old girl and they kind her. of 
superimposing them on each other. And yeah, I mean, look, anyone with a brain is gonna gonna say like that's definitely her. But you think it gets you you think it can't get worse than that? Oh, okay? that's the crazy thing. Before we even get into Uncle Mikey's thing, which he's gonna say is, you know what happened after this? Um, we'll play this clip in a minute. The local government probably don't have him in the background because he doesn't represent. Yeah, yeah, that he doesn't re represent. Yeah, no, let's <laughs> let's move it back to. Um, in fact, I'm gonna skip past this part to the. Um, um, we'll skip past this thing here, to to that one. No, 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 no. We'll get there. We've got quite a segment to cover here, guys. But what what happened? First of all, the Sujo government came out and said that it was a, they investigated. It was a normal marriage. There's nothing wrong with this. You know. Um, she's got a mess, mental disability, so that's why he has a chain to the wall. So yeah, that's, so that's they, they literally excused the behavior and said, stay out of it, it's a personal affair. Then, okay, on top of it, um, he started to get brand deals where he was now like he's... That's coming, that's coming. Yeah, he's promoting stuff. And then, even better, the Sujo government stepped in to renovate his house for him. Yeah. To say, oh, you guys are living in such poverty. We're going to, because obviously it got a lot of media attention. This is a good PR moment where the, we can renovate your house for you because you have to raise this family by yourself and you have a mentally disabled wife. Not, no one's saying like, hang on a second, you've got a woman chained to the, a mentally disabled woman chained to a wall in a pigsty who's been, had forced to give birth to eight children in like probably and is like a missing child. one a year yeah. and who is most definitely looks exactly like this person that was kidnapped. He's getting rewarded for his bad behavior. The language used by the government is basically, if you if you read through it, it's that he suffers so much mm. to have to deal with the fact that his wife is disabled. So he alone had to raise eight children. So we're going to step in and make this poverty alleviation story. And when the bad press came out and the, all the netizens, I got to give credit to a lot of the netizens yeah. who really got to the bottom of this. They were like, this is really messed up. Yeah. Something needs to be done about this, and they leaned into it. They said, "Nope, we investigated. That's not the case." Because in China, when when the Chinese government has been wrong, if they're wrong about something, they will never once, ever, ever, ever admit fault. Yeah. You will never ever see anyone admit fault. So what happens here is they say, "No, that's not the case. This is a personal affair. We're still going to build them a house." Yeah, it's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And uh, as you're going to see <clears throat> after we play uh, Uncle Mikey's clip. After we play that clip, uh, you're going to see that this is quite common in China, actually. Yeah. It's not it's not uncommon to find mentally disabled people chained up in the rural parts of China. Or or just women slaves. Yeah, that's true. Know? Anyway, uh, let's get into it. Now, the, we're going to show you uh, Uncle Mikey's clip, and there is a link to his channel, and we'd love for yeah, you please. to... Yeah, please. Actually, I want everyone, yeah. after if, you've liked, if you like the clip, yeah. I want everyone to go over. It's the first link that I shared in the description. I want you to go to subscribe to his yeah, channel. Yeah, just uh, maybe leave a ADV China sent, sent he, me type clip, because he's... He does great stuff. Um, you have to understand his position. Of course, he can't criticize the government too much, but what he can do um, is talk about situations like this, because... This is a situation where um, the netizens in China are outraged and are discussing it. It seems to be something that hasn't been clamped on too to clamped down on too much, I should say. He also lives abroad. Yeah, he does. So he's, he's safe but, enough. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's play his clip, shall we? Yes. Get right into it here. One, two, three. He explains it very well. Hello guys, China Uncle Mackie here. Recently, a eight children's mother from Jiangsu province became a hot topic on the Chinese social media. The reason behind it was she was suspected to be abducted from another province to the village for breeding and reproducing children. When people found her, she was in a quite horrified situation. She was chained up, locked in the room, quite dirty room, for quite a long time, almost 20 years. So let's have a look at the news and have a good discussion. The news was reported from Feng County, Xuzhou city of Jiangsu province, located on the northeast part of China, between the border of Shandong province and Jiangsu province. The reason why Feng County is such a rural remote place trending on the internet was because a guy called the father of eight children owns a Douyin account which had 63k subscribers in his channel he claimed that he is a father who has a hard life to raise eight children many chinese sent him aid to help him after watched his videos recently another douyin blogger visited them to help this family the original idea was to show a heartwarming story of helping the poor on douyin but once this video was released 
Chinese netizens questioned why this woman was chained in such a horrible, dirty place. The food and the bed was eye-catching, etc. and etc. I'll give you a dress. 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 Due to the tremendous attention the video got, the local Xuzhou government released an announcement basically saying they got married legally, there is no abduction and human trafficking, and the case is still being investigation. But this announcement was not accepted by the Chinese netizens. It generated more public opinions, urged the local government to release more information of this public affair. The Feng County government lately released another investigation report that says the police is now working on matching DNA in the National Missing Population Database, but not yet have a result. The report is still focusing on how to give the woman a proper medical treatment so and so, rather than identify the real background of this woman. The Chinese netizens seem are not very happy with the government report. Someone digged out a missing girl called Li Ying who was born in 1984 and missed in 1996 in Sichuan province, Nanchong city. Also posted their facial feature matching picture to show the mother of the eight woman is suspected as the missing girl Li Ying from Sichuan province. The news is now still trending. Chinese netizens lately found another disabled, chained, mentally disordered woman in Feng County in the same village and posted another video. <laughs> The Feng County case is not a single case of illegal detention, abduction, slavery, or sexual abuse reported in China. Just recently, the Shanghai Little Red House went viral months ago, where a Chinese guy called Zhao Fuchang adopted many girls in the Red Building for prostitution, sexual slavery, and female egg harvesting. Yeah, the, the female egg harvesting thing is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this we've, we took this footage behind us here. When we yeah. first uh, did our, a couple of years ago, we did our quest for the best Chinese. Remember, I flew in from China and we yeah. did, we, you know, we both flew in and we went up the, the West Coast to find Chinese food. And in the Chinese restaurants, well, in some of them, they were advertising this whole thing where you can become a, an egg donor and it starts at $20,000. Wild. It's, it's a lot. Um, but it's specifically all in Chinese and you got a QR code and all that. So there's this whole thing about making money off of uh, selling eggs, right? Yeah. And um, that's what this other guy that he was just talking about who ran that red red house thing. That's terrible. It's a huge scandal in China. He was doing that as well. Mm. He was like um, harvesting um, eggs and mm. selling them. It's mm. kind of disgusting. Yeah. I mean, it's all disgusting. Yeah. Anyway, let's continue. It's not done. We're not done yet uh, with little Uncle, with Uncle Mike, not little Uncle Mike, with China Uncle Mikey's uh, clip. So let's get into it. It's coming. Eventually. So I get that ad. Yeah, just uh, make sure people know. Zhao Fuchang had deep connections with the local Yangpu government officials and the police were many involved after this case was exposed in the public news. One girl fled from the red building, then reported them in the local police station, but ironically, she was sent back to Zhao Fuchang by the police. Zhao Fuchang was lately sentenced to suspended death penalty on the news. In the year 2008, a naked mentally disordered woman was also found in Shandong Weifang. She was chained in a dirty hut for almost 15 years by his so-called husband. China Central Television was also reported back in the day. <laughs> Another Sichuan girl called Cao Xiaoqing was abducted to Inner Mongolia in the year 1991. In the year 2008, she was rescued by the police when she was almost jailed for 15 years in a poor, dirty place. 
She was also found mentally disordered after the long-term torch she experienced in a horrible environment. If you just search the same women abduction topic, you will find uncountable cases on the internet such as the famous Henan Luoyang sex slavery case where a guy jailed six bar girls under his basement where basically just underground holes he dug under his apartment and the two victims were killed by this guy since the resistance. Finally, according to many people replied on Weibo, in China buy a wife in many of the rural poor villages is a common thing, and most of those uneducated villagers don't think it is illegal. This is the most horrified part of the issue. When the things are treated as normal, the things are going on forever. Thanks for watching. China Uncle Mikey. See you in next video. Right, so look. It's awful. And while I was living in China, I would quite often read in the lo local newspaper mm. when they would find people that have been chained up. Yeah. And the crazy thing is that the people that chained them up never got any legal repercussions. Nope. It's just like, oh, this poor people have to deal with a mentally disabled person. So that's why they chained them up. That was usually the outcome. It goes beyond that, though. I mean, we've seen situations where party officials in some of these villages will uh, rape and sometimes murder sure. women. Mm hmm. And the repercussions for them are to hide it, hide it, hide it, hide it. Villagers find out, they protest, they freak out, bang on his door, ask the central government to remove him. Never happens. Yeah. Um, to quash dissent, they'll basically send in police to shut everyone up. Yeah. And they'll usually get away with it. Sometimes their reprimand will be like, okay, you retire now. Yeah. Remember, there was a huge <clears> issue <throat> with illegal brick kilns as well. Yeah. You know, where they yeah. would basically... Um, create slaves out of it was mentally handicapped people and make big them slave build, industry in china yeah, like build bricks yeah you know that's all they did all the time and like it's disgusting the, the brick kilns outside of the city i lived in had a lot of mentally disabled workers but yeah. they weren't like it wasn't a government initiative to give jobs no to, it's because they don't have to pay them they don't have to pay yeah. them because normally they would be chained up yeah you know it's pretty awful and you know they always find these people <laughs> and they're mentally disabled chained up in a shed or whatever but the fact of the matter is i feel like they became mentally disabled by being chained up That's, in that shed. i don't think they started out that way and, and again it doesn't matter yeah. either way both are horrific but i think you, there's a lot of merit into what you're saying because these squalor positions conditions that they're in yeah horrible horrible abuse that these people suffer is going to scar them and give them yeah. ptsd of well, course that woman chained in that hut for 20 years she looked normal to me when yeah. she was in her child photo yeah. if that is indeed her which we're, we're just gonna say it's, it's come her. on we're gonna say it's her but um the fact that the guy gets rewarded is the worst part so let's look at some of his rewards yeah so uh, can is... you turn down his, the audio it's very loud yeah, sorry, we, you yeah. know, with the China Uncle Mikey clip, we got to tell that guy at some point to learn how to mix his audio. This is mixed, but I don't, I want to talk over it because yeah. you don't need to hear what he's saying. Yeah. So they, this is just an introduction. This is the guy um, yeah. and his eight children. So again, he's kind of famous in social media. This, by the way, is mm. after this whole scandal broke. Yes. When yes. They, everybody knows he has a chained up, you know, slave who gave birth to eight children in his yeah. backyard. This is after everyone knows. They all know. Yeah. Okay, so what are they, what are they doing now? The, again, the netizens are freaking out, yeah. but he still has a huge audience, yeah. right? So this audience is like, yeah, look at this poor, poor dude. He's raising eight kids by himself. And this whole thing, this is a very big part of Chinese uh, chauvinistic culture, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That if a dad was to raise children, like a mom raising children in China, everyone would be like, yeah, be shu de in guy de, right? That, yeah. Of course you do. If a dad's raising all these children, that's like hero status. They're like, oh, how poor man he he should be out there poking his pot belly out smoking cigarettes and drinking sure. baijiu with his friends not raising the children that's a woman's job yeah exactly. you know well what's this clip all about so this clip this is just an introduction i want to go into what has happened what his rewards have been yeah so keep keep go, just keep going okay so this are these are again i, I put this in because i wanted to show the post uh post scandal after the government says yeah it's fine it's just a misunderstanding i think it doesn't matter what side of the fence you stand on this. Let's just say, oh, um, okay, it's his legally married wife or whatever. I still think chaining a mentally handicapped person to the wall and then um, having sex with them is already wrong. This is so demonetized, by the way. But yeah. yeah, I yeah. just got to say, like, look. So thanks for your support. If you're mentally, I'm sure that there are some laws against, like, if someone's mentally handicapped, they cannot give consent. 
Of course. You know? Of course. Especially if they're chained in a room. And they're basically pumping out a kid a I, year. I usually want to play devil's advocate, but in this situation, there's never going to be a fair trial and there's no. never going to be a fair investigation. So I don't want to play devil's advocate here. This is an, a, an abducted woman that was kidnapped when she was 12, sold as a sex slave, raped and forced and abused, ripped her teeth out, forced to have eight children, chained up while eating cold, uh, rotten porridge inside of a pig pig shack. Uh, yeah. Just, that, that's what we're dealing with here. This guy is now doing advertisements. This is one for a local wedding uh, photography yeah, look, company or a wedding company. Why would you why would you want to get your wedding photos taken by a guy who's so-called married to a sex slave that lives in a pigsty? Why like oh, so he Do you got... also subject women to chaining and torture and rape? Yeah, then come, come see by by ba. You know? Come and get your wedding photos taken here. How do you how do you justify this by the way if you're an apologist for the Chinese state how do you justify that this not that this stuff happens that this stuff isn't punished yes how do you justify this yeah this guy's getting brand deals we don't even get brand deals no he's <laughs> getting brand deals because he here's another brand deal for what is this for a, contra a construction company or something listen to this let me yeah. just throw okay. something out there we get countless brands that turn us down because they don't want to ruffle any feathers because they're scared of China. And they're like, oh, we can't piss yeah. off China because our supply chains are there. We want that market because yeah. we stand up for human rights. Because we talk about cases like this. Yeah. This guy, on the other hand, is getting brand deals after raping and torturing a woman and chaining her to the wall. Like, yeah, that's yeah. correct. That This is the world and we live in. keeping her in a squalid little correct. pigsty yes. outside the house. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, again, oh. he's getting... Uh, as another company that d decided to sponsor him, it's because he's got mass, a huge fan base. Yeah, because right? now he's popular in the news. <clears throat> right. So yeah, basically he goes around and he says, "I choose this company. It's great. It's awesome. Reward me more." Mm. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for. And then the government comes to renovate his house. <laughs> it's just it's insane. Like, what the hell? <laughs> It's insane. It's again, you can find so many situations like that where the Chinese government just yeah. baffles you by being evil and then steps up and dude, goes even further. Dude, this this is like incel heaven. Yes, it is. Okay. It is. Go and kidnap a woman. <laughs> yes. pay, pay someone to kidnap a 12-year-old that you can have as a sex slave in your backyard. Yes. Okay. Chain them up like a dog. Feed them table scraps. Yes. Kind of just have as many Remove kids as you want. Remove their teeth for some reason. Yeah. Uh, maybe, she had all her maybe teeth removed. Like, yeah, well, a lot of her teeth were missing. Yeah. So maybe it was beating her. Beating or, her I don't know what the case. Who knows? who knows? Whatever. And then if anyone finds out about it, you get a new house. What the hell, guys? What the hell, China? This I mean, is that's, low even for the CCP. It's, it's insult to injury over and over and over again. Yeah. I'm just, there's so many situations where, like, people are proven innocent, too, after they've been punished in China, and then they punish them more. Yeah. Because they're not allowed to be wrong. And this is, yeah. again, this is a situation. The normal government would be like, holy shit, back up. Yeah. Even like a shitty government. Back up. This is bad press. Yeah. This rapist dude keeping slaves. Yeah. Oh, shit. This investigation just came out. Okay. Actually, the CCP stepped up and said, you know what? We're going to punish this guy. The truth has been found out. Homes have been found for these eight children. They have yeah. the means for this. Yeah. And future, the village has been given 10 million RMB to prevent things like this from happening again. Yeah. Nope. We weren't wrong. This guy's great. What a saint. Brand deals, new house. <laughs> it's just like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just one of those things. Look, we can comment about this because we've seen places oh, like yeah. this. Oh, yeah. This isn't rare. Like this. this is not rare. Um, we've got a couple of examples here. You, you know, whenever you're looking at news about China or you're watching the China shills or something, they'll show you Shanghai. Let's look at the streets of Shanghai or Shenzhen or Beijing or something. Let's look at a big city. Look at the bright lights. Look at the... That's not all of China. That's a small percentage of what China is really like. Like pretty much half of China lives in this kind of rural, kind of impoverished way. Yeah. 48% or something. Oh, yeah. Whatever the statistic is. A huge chunk. Yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> so this kind of bad stuff does happen out there. And if you've been out there and you've oh, seen yeah. it yourself, you know it's true. You know no, there's nothing. Not only that, people open. The locals, if you talk to them, they open up to you. They're actually not super shy about this. Unlike the central government yeah. that wants to cover everything up. If you get, spend enough time, I'm even talking an hour yeah. in a village with some of these people and you ask them what's the do around here, this stuff comes up because they have no one else to talk to about it. 
They can't post about it. They can't they can't go call Beijing and tell them about it. So they talk to even foreigners about it. like, yeah, there's this rapist dude that lives here. Yeah. You know, there it's bad. Bad stuff happens. Well, out I mean, there. look, look what's in the background here. Now this is considered normal and it's completely acceptable as well as tethering children up with chains as well in the in the villages. Now this happens because you've got this issue they called um left behind children. Yeah. I think it's what it's called. Yeah, left behind children. Um and what happens is because of the big push for urbanization in China, when you grow up uh, as a young couple in a rural village and you have a child, um, you will need to move to the urban centers in order to get a job, in order to earn money. So what they usually do is once they give birth to the child, they leave the child with the grandparents mm-hmm. in the village, yeah. like in the rural village. But the, the grandparents have to also like be farm. working on the farm. They have to be doing whatever they have to do or they're too old or whatever. So they chain the kids up for the majority of the time when they yeah. can't actually watch them, you know? Yeah. So that's also something that happens and it's just kind of like whatever, you know, to leave kids chained up in a filthy, horrible situation. It's another thing that happens in China and people don't talk about. This whole chaining people up to walls and chaining people up in like pigsties and stuff, it's it's not a one-off thing is what we're trying no, to get to no, here. It's something no. that is, I could say, fairly common. I'm not going to say it's super common, but it's yeah, it's not like common. oh, Jim does that down the road. But it's yeah. so common that they found other examples of this in the next village over. Yeah, and in the same village. Yes, in the same village that this woman was in. Yeah, and it, it's it's endemic. It's a yeah. problem because what happens is this barrier that the Chinese government has created to say this is none of our business this is a family issue mm. means that people get away with so much of the horror stories that my Chinese friends told me, especially ones that moved to the big city from villages. Yeah about what growing up mm. one of my friends lived next to a guy that blew that blew up and killed a, a bus full of people just to rob them right yeah wasn't in the news mm. you know mm. but he was his neighbor sure. neighbors down the road another rapist dude raping his own kids yeah. right that kind of stuff happens and it's not not that it happens more necessarily it's that it goes unpunished so then it does happen more over time because people know that they can get away with it yeah, well, right. my recent video about that guy who uh, beat his wife savagely and yeah. all he did was get like, well, he got five days detention only because it went viral. Right. But the woman got criticized and, and re-educated. re-educated and told that it was her fault for escalating it. And the government does you know? do this often is they'll take the the mm-hmm. abuser side because mm-hmm. what it does is it kind of it calms the situation down. Yeah. People talk about it less. Oh, yeah, we dealt with it. Meanwhile, it's like, yeah, we re-educated the... Oh, yeah, it looks like my microphone was a bit low. Sorry, guys. I apologize for that. <clears throat> yeah, no, look, it's it's just a sad, sorry state of affairs. And it shows you that every time you see, oh, China's launching a, a probe to Mars or, you know, like we're going to land a probe on the dark side of the moon. Look at our incredible high speed rail network. Maybe they should be focusing on fixing this kind of thing first. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. they should be focusing on the fact that you've got people <clears throat> chaining women to the walls all right and and raping them and taking advantage of them and, and all the other crap that happens in the rural villages because that's a real part of china that never gets the spotlight we've seen it ourselves personally plenty of anecdotes that we could tell you but this right here just shows you that this is not uncommon and the fact that people are even talking about this on the internet in china because usually bad news like this gets censored and you don't get to hear about it, but it just shows you how real it is and that it is a real existing problem in China. We're having a very in- interesting issue is the view count keeps going to zero and everyone keeps noticing it. And there are so many Wumas in the comments. Right. And they actually came out when we started talking about the Olympics. Interesting. It makes sense they'd be running massive defense right now. Yeah. China is super worried that something's going to happen during the Olympics. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, we're going to move on to that now, really. We're pretty much done with this topic. <clears throat> it's an awful topic. Yeah, I mean, we, oh, by the way, this is 100% demonetized. Yeah. Uh, I guarantee you, 100%. So the people super chatting, the people supporting us on Patreon, massive shout out. Yeah. Um, because there's, I mean, we're talking about stuff because we care about it, not to make money, obviously, but yeah. Getting some compensation from this, we really appreciate your supporters. We do. We do. Are we going to do a super chat or two before yeah. we hit our Wubao corner? Um, We've still got plenty to come, guys, especially the Olympic stuff. Oh, so yeah. stick around for that. Wait for the Wubao. Mm. See, it, see, it keeps dropping. Weird. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's very weird. Uh, AB says, thank God you guys are here. Now I can finally clean my room. <laughs> I do like to watch a good podcast while I, or listen to a podcast when I clean. It's oh, nice. okay, cool. Beijing Bikini says, thoughts on the new Asian boss? Steven got mad at you. Yeah, he was directing some hatred towards me in that uh, video. Now, we are going to talk about that in the next episode, actually. Can um, I Can I just um, uh, read my comment? 
Sure. I think people have to understand the context first. So I'll say that while you pull it up. Yeah. All right. So Asian Boss, uh, it's a channel where Asian countries uh, have produ- uh, people that go around do street interviews, which is fine. But to do street interviews in China, you either need explicit government uh, approval and a journalist license, or you need to be very, very careful. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was I, I made a patron post on some stuff. But anyway, long story short, um, they're trying to run defense on the fact that there's speculation that what they're doing is disingenuine. Of course, the, it's disingenuine. The, the problem with that is there's two reasons for that. We'll get into that next time. But they were caught fabricating some interviews in Taiwan. Mm-hmm. And now they have a whole, you know, a whole series where they're filming on the street in China. And we in know Shanghai. how that we yeah. know how that works. Well, first of all, Shanghai is not mm. China. That's like, you know, I don't know if you wanted to find out about the rural farmland in America, but you go film in New York City. In, in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't compute. If you but wanna, it's still the same laws. Yeah. I mean, you anyway, can't, the fact of the matter is we know ourselves yeah. that you cannot just go out and interview people in public in China and without be government. Approval. Yeah, without government approval and be public on the Internet and have so many followers and so on. Um, without scrutiny. So number one, they know that they can't broach certain subjects because it's going to get them kicked out of China. Mm -hmm. Uh, And number two, the most important part is that Chinese people are not allowed to publicly criticize the government because there'd be massive repercussions and they're showing their faces. So anything they say, in fact, I'll just read you the comment I left on the video and then we can leave that, leave Mm -hmm. it alone. I said, we're going to cover it in more detail. We will. I said, so the only way to wake people up and bring the world together, because that's their whole thing. We're trying to bring the world together and prevent World War Three. No, you're not. The only way to wake people up and bring the world together is to release CCP-approved messages so you don't get shut down and run out of China. Noted. We'll keep that in mind when watching Chinese citizens who are not allowed to criticize the CCP in fear of serious repercussions appear publicly on your cameras. And I've been seeing this a lot. Yeah. This whole idea that um, we have to work together, you know, if we want to bring the world together for peace. and That's stuff. great. And But you know the message whenever they say that? Yeah. It's like, we want to work together, yeah. but the only way to do that is... is is for us to swallow Capitulate. CCP yep. propaganda. Yep. That's the only That's way. That's literally what it means. I've seen yeah. one of the shills, one of the famous shills. Yeah. He does this. This whole thing is, we'll call him golf shill. Yeah. The one that got caught. Yeah. Um, he, he has this idea that it's this partnership. They, there's a spectrum of, of pro CCP shills. Yeah. There's the wolf warriors. Mm-hmm. There's the people that go out there and say, fuck the West, yeah. fuck democracy. Well, the Chinese state's amazing. Then you have the more nuanced ones. Then you have the ones that are like, "We, I am the bridge between mm. China and America, and the only way the world will win is if two countries are partnered together." Sounds like a lovely sentiment. It's, I also agree. I lived in China for ten years, loved the country. Yeah. But what it is is actually a front for Chinese propaganda, yeah. and it's if you l- read between the lines, it's all anti-America. Yeah. America fucked up. America's bad. America. The only way that this bridge can be built is if America basically gives up all its gives morals, up all its morals, forgets any everything about human rights. You know, all their speeches accepts, are for the pro CCP yeah. organizations. Yeah. They're on state media, and you see this, and you mm. see this time and time again. And so, Asian boss, unfortunately, right now is really heading down that path in my mind. I actually, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I didn't watch Asian boss before okay. this whole thing. Came I did. Out. Um, but I, they'd always been popping up in recommendations. Um, and I noticed that they just kind of before were just doing like normal things and talking about like the usual thing. But now the China focus that's come out now, it's, it's just very ridiculous. sus. You can, it's very you sus. can see that what, what they, it seems like what they had is a dying channel and now they've been sponsored by the Chinese government or by something like that to propaganda go out, department. To, propaganda department we'll to go out, out and make, we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. Anyway, we, we're getting There's sidetracked. There's people on the job, so. We're getting sidetracked. We have to go to Wumao Corner, okay? Yeah. So Wumao Corner. We only we, did one. I know, we, we, we'll do Yum Chat, it'll be okay. fun. Sure. Uh, Wumao Corner is where we talk about the haters and uh, the nonsense that happens. We just got a short one for you today, but it's actually very funny. Um, you may recall from our last podcast that uh, Drew Pavlu did those Peng Shui t-shirts, remember? Yeah. Yeah, where are Peng Shui, where is Peng Shui T-shirt? So uh, the the cool thing about that is it worked incredibly well. You have to explain what happened. Always yeah. pretend like it's a new audience. Well, basically, some activists tried to go to the Australian Tennis Open wearing a "Where is Peng Shui" T-shirt. They got kicked out. The police were called. They were told they're not allowed to display their T-shirts. He made a big stink out of it. Got a GoFundMe going. Printed a thousand mm-hmm. T-shirts. Uh, the the Australian Tennis. Um, association eventually after so much international press because it went viral everybody was talking about this they capitulated and said no you can wear those t-shirts now so he handed out a thousand t-shirts to people going in and around the the stadium 
and then what happened was um, the the cameramen were very quick to like like move around and not show the Peng Shui t-shirts as much as possible. But uh, they managed to capture a few by mistake. Yes. And there were like pictures. He released a whole bunch of stuff. But the funny part was right when he was doing this, like, where is Peng Shui t-shirts thing? A bunch of the tankies, you know, tankies are, um, you know, sort of West, Western uh, wool mouths, basically. Yeah. Um, they mm-hmm. put out this thing where they said, uh, I'm one of them said, I'm starting a campaign to look for Drew's mother. I will print a thousand shirts with the words. Where is Drew Pavlou's mum? We need to get to the bottom of this, seeing that Drew seems to have absolutely been brought up without parental care or love. Any donation is welcome. So uh, Drew Pavlou's mom replies, which is the best part. And she said, I'm alive and well and raised someone with balls. What have you done with your life? <laughs> and Drew just said, yeah, Drew said, lol. Yeah. I just love that his mom came in and was like, shut the hell up. <laughs> this is Drew's yeah. uh, update on the whole thing. Yeah, this situation. is his update. Let's listen to it quickly. She's asking her to come out. Usually you're able to say it's about 10 to say it's done, but they are allowed to come to take your shirts on the banner. As we all know, when ethnic stuff happens, money's always involved. So according to the Drew's article in 2018, the Australian Open was taking $25 million a year annually in Chinese corporate sponsorship. Detailed, detailed, good news. Where's Tromosvi when anyone ever tries yeah, so he handed out all these. The fundraiser was uh, was good. Uh, Drew handed out the T-shirts successfully. Mm-hmm. People were allowed to wear them. They won. Yeah. Uh, they even got the Wolf Warrior Zhao Lijian to make a statement on it, which yeah. he said like, "How dare you even care about something so trivial?" Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so long story short, that was uh, Drew's update there. Yeah. Congrats to him. Hilarious uh, performance by his mother. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was fantastic. Sorry about the audio issues, guys. Mm, not not doing very well in that one this no. time around, are we? Anyway, <laughs> we missed all of it. Don't yeah. worry about it. You, yeah, go to his TikTok. It's, it's, uh, it's right here. It's straightforward. He basically just explained the situation and explained how you know it's been a success now, and they raised the money and and all that stuff, which is fantastic. Yes. It really worked out well. All right, guys. Now um, we're going to head into Worldview. Yes. Um, I think let's just just go straight in. We'll do yum cha big time. You want to do another super chat? I do. I want okay. to keep people. All right. Let's give yeah. another super chat. Then. Doc Slothington says, shout out to Sea Milk for calling out those watching and benefiting from the hyper partisan mess in the latest video. Thank you very much. Hope you guys check it out. Talk mm-hmm. about how uh, the CCP is taking advantage of the fact that Republicans and Democrats are constantly bickering and fighting with each other and taking advantage of that division and laughing. You know, Still yeah. managed to get. Mm-hmm fucking beijing biden fucking mm. fuck trump nazi stuff in the comments because they didn't wa- actually watch the video yeah. you know what you know what as somebody who's not american how that annoys me because why does every single issue around the world not being an american why does any issue to do with china <clears throat> have to revolve around freaking assange or snowden or freaking biden or trump right what does it have to do with anything Right. I come from a country that's got nothing to do with any of those things. Right. And yet when I talk about an issue, it's like Biden this Trump that, right. Snowden, Assange. It's like, what the hell does that have to do with anything? It means you're not allowed to pay attention to any other issue because it's always got to be related to that. Exactly. It's like if you go to an, into an Italian restaurant, you're like, the sushi sucks here because there isn't any and it's not on the menu. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the, my point of the video is that the CCP not only revels yeah. in it, but it designs a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I know. It's just freaking annoying. Anyway. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Case Close 93 says, with a hamster cull in Hong Kong. So basically, yeah, uh, hamsters yeah. were blamed for COVID. They culled all the hamsters and people were crying and stuff. Yeah, you had, to, you had to hand in your pets to be incinerated. Yeah. I see Hong Kong is trying to match the mainland's animal rights record along with the human rights. But yeah, quickly. Yeah. Catching up. Yeah. Reed Strip Matter says, hey guys, great to catch you live again. Was on holiday in... Uh, Tenerife recently, and you can't send supers if you're in a different country. Oh, no worries. Well, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Reality hijack. The honking will continue until freedom improves. Um, <laughs> stay awesome, boys. Thank Free you. speech respecter says China 
uh, could have all industrialized, could have industrialized so many times uh, in its history that it could have rivaled Europe, but they keep preventing them. Why? Um, that's dynastical change, uh, yes. and usually power power struggles. Well, you also have to understand what happened in China a lot is if a, a new invention was made or discovered, mm -hmm. the emperor would be like, nobody can know about this. Right. This is my secret to have. You know, like we're going to keep this a secret from not only the rest of the world, but from our own people, yes. you know? Yeah. And so you'd, they'd be very secretive about things. And like, for instance, when, uh, let's just say a, a paper was invented, it was only used like in the courts and stuff. Yes. It's not for like everybody can use it. Yeah, so I they think, were, so all about like me, 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 no, no, don't. I think a lot of people get confused because China yeah. was the most advanced civilization uh, for a period of time. Yeah. But it wasn't a civilization for the every man. It no. wasn't that everyone was walking around with golden tablets and stuff like this. Sure. It was the inventions were for the elite, right? Yeah. And it's always been like that. And that's why you see such wealth disparity. The Chinese Communist Party, I say this all the time, is just the next dynasty. Yeah. It's not a new China. They always say it's a new China post 19. 49 it's just another dynasty yeah. and those in power xi jinping's clan currently at the moment it it still creates the same wealth disparity the same peasants you just saw in the previous videos yeah. the same sort of life still exists yeah it's the same wealth disparity that it's always been and this the people the elite get brainwashed yeah the, the top five percent get brainwashed china's developed just as developed more developed than america yeah and the rest of the country's like what the fuck are you talking about sure <laughs> you know sure, I mean? sure i'm living in a dirt hut i know it's awful right it's yeah. awful anyway, okay we'll, yeah we'll move on keep keep sending those super chats we'll get to them in yamcha yeah we're gonna have a big yamcha we're gonna move on to worldview where we talk about what's going on in the world specifically with to do with china and today about the olympics and yes. wait to see these woo maos i'm telling you right now it's i just saw it when we were talking about the olympics they're so scared at coverage of the olympics right now yeah so what do we got here well uh we're gonna start talking about um a belgian skeleton racer now, I didn't even know what skeleton racing is, to be honest. I looked it up. It's basically like bobsledding, but with just on a on a sled. And face first as well. Face first, yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it's a valid sport, I guess. Thanks for your approval. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, valid winter sport. Now, she tested negative. She had COVID back in Belgium, I guess. Okay. And yeah, she's she from tested, she, Her name's Kim Mayamans. Yeah. So she tested negative. Um multiple times before flying mm. out to Beijing. But when she got to Beijing, she tested positive. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Either way, I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. She tested positive. So she was shifted off to an isolation place. Mm -hmm. But she had a bit of a meltdown. Um, and she had a meltdown because she was told that she could go back to the Olympic Village and isolate there. Yeah. Okay. But then without alerting her, um, her team, without alerting her superiors, without alerting her country or anything, they shifted her off to a completely different isolation area. Like, she didn't know where she went. Nobody told her where she was. Her government didn't know where she was. Nobody knew where she was. And of course, she was terrified. Imagine all this news saying, like, be careful when you go to China. The Chinese government does tend to disappear to Canadians and <laughs> sure. people like that. And then all of a sudden, you're getting whisked well, away it's, somewhere. It's not, it's not just that. They're like, yes, you can go back to the Olympic Village and then you get in the car and they drive in a different direction yeah, and take you to some random saying, place. But you have all those pre yeah. preconceived notions in your head. But it's the typical Chinese thing that they do when the authorities arrest people is they don't care to inform people where they're going, you know? Yeah. So it's like when people get arrested and their families and their friends are like, do you know where this person went? Remember, we'd get those text messages when foreigners would go missing. Does anyone in, does anyone know where like oh, John yeah. is? John, and then we're like, who's John? They're like, oh, it's an Irish guy. Yeah, he got picked up at a raid at a, right. at a bar. And you're like, uh, okay, but like... There we, was one, you know, one guy that was found tied up in a river and they said it was suicide. I remember that. Remember that guy? Yeah. He was an Irish guy. He was playing video games. His PS3 was still on in this room and his door was open. Yeah, but I'm talking about like when they officially arrested Yeah, him. when they officially arrest someone. Like yeah. when they arrested that guy who pushed the taxi driver and uh, his mom was like, yeah. Where, where's my son? And yeah. they wouldn't tell him. Yeah. It's like two weeks later or whatever, he'll surface. Right. And they'll say, oh, he's being held at this detention center. So you can understand how... How terrifying it must be for her, and so she had this meltdown. Which I, I mean, no, we don't have to. Play we don't it have to play it. But she just everybody um, give it a little glimpse. Mm -hmm. Some of you have read the good news that I was uh, sent out of the isolation facility. We thought this meant I was allowed to return to you get the, the idea. Olympic I want you to pause it though. I want to talk about something. I didn't want to give anybody uh, some screen time, but the uh, mm -hmm. the shill, the pro CCP shill accounts. Yeah. 
So when we say that, we're talking about the the white monkey job guys that have YouTube channels that run defense for the CCP. Sure. They were putting out videos about how amazing everyone's experience is and how the Olympians are blown away by the hospitality <laughs> in China and how amazing it is. And they're yeah. doing that. They're running defense for stories like this. Of course. And it's pretty hilarious to see them do that. China is very concerned that stories like this are going to come out. And you'll see actually what happens because they eventually they came after the story ran because yeah. uh, they're allowed to post online, obviously. How are they going to stop that? Yeah other than threatening them by saying sure. that you're not allowed to post anything political, by the way. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the the story runs and then they go, okay, 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 okay. we're yeah. going to whisk you back to the Olympic Village. Yeah, it's, it's there's insane. no There's no rules in China. No. So so what happened was, just like you said, she had this meltdown, which went viral. It okay. treats maximum as a close contact. Um, on the way to the part. village, sure. uh, we did not turn to the village. But the ambulance went to another facility where I am now. So, yeah, she's, she's upset because, like we said, instead of going where she thought she was going, she was whisked away somewhere else. Okay. It's not what you want to happen to you now, in China. And she was, uh. she was told she has to stay there for a further seven days in yeah. that facility, yes. you know? Away from the Olympic Village, so she can't train, she can't do all that stuff which she was expecting to do. Sure. Um, when this went viral and started to make international news, immediately they came and knocked on her door. So they knocked on her door um, at 11.35 in the, at night. Mm -hmm. And they're like, es and then they escorted her to the Olympic Village. Because that's how it happens in China. Look, the domestic abuse thing I spoke about as well. The guy's beaten his wife for years, whatever, nothing happens. She can report it to the cops all she wants. It's not going to do anything. It goes viral. People start being like, hey, wait, this is crap. Immediately, they go and arrest the guy. You only got five days. But you know what I'm saying? The only way to affect change in China is if the government loses face. Embarrassment. And it's in, through embarrassment. And this is embarrassing for the Chinese Yeah, government. because if you show someone that's... We'll live in the fear. <laughs> then it's not looking good for all these accommodations that they've yeah. set up. This utopia that they've set up in this closed-circuit Beijing prison. Right. Yeah. It goes against the billion dollars that they threw at this. I've also got to say that this woman, um, she's she she doesn't understand how bad it is if you're a Chinese person put into quarantine. Can be. Okay. I mean, I can see whatever wherever sympathy. she is. I mean, I've got lots of sympathy, but look at the background. There's like this lovely painting of like mountains and stuff. Let's it's see what a, happens. To the Chinese people they get forced into quarantine. Yeah, yeah. When a Chinese Probably. person gets forced into quarantine. They have a lot more to cry about than she does. I'll tell you that much. Let's get past her long crying. Oh, there we go. Let's get to the let's get to the meat of this. Here we go. Hang on. Thank you. This is what you get shoved into if you're just a, a Chinese person. You can like where's the trough? Yeah, like a dog kennel or something like that. You know. Yeah. That's actually nice because they actually have like They've got flow. AC. Look at that. They, They've got AC. The, the worst ones are when you're welded into your home and you starve to death. Yeah, that's Remember true. that old bit? Oh, yeah, that too. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I just you, you have to understand, again, the, the athletes, they've done absolutely everything in their power to put on a good show and yeah. uh, to, to provide the best. They've probably f flown in Michelin star chefs and, you know, made sure everything's great. Of course. But, um, so I actually wanted to say something about the Olympics. If we can get something Olympic related up. Now, I hope that everyone is boycotting the Olympics currently. Oh, yeah. We don't want NBC's rating or wherever you are that's broadcasting. We don't want their ratings to go up. Yeah. So don't even accidentally be like, hmm, let me just have a look. Don't give them that view. Don't yeah. do it. Don't yeah. do it. Don't watch it on YouTube. Don't watch it on anything. If you want to read an article about it, that's fine. Yeah. I've seen overwhelmingly negative articles across all platforms, which is really making me happy. Yeah. Um, but one thing I wanted to say was about the controversial Olympics uh, opening ceremony. Yeah. <clears throat> you know China is faced with all these allegations or accusations, I should say, of Xinjiang genocide. Yes. That they're genociding over a million uh, Uyghurs, well, at least cultural genocide and, and st forced sterilization, mm -hmm. putting them in forced torture camps, all this kind of stuff. We know that that's, that's a thing. Sure. And the rest of the world has kind of banned it. Well, the, mo the moral leaderships of the world have banded together and said, yes, that's a, that's a big thing with diplomatic boycotts, things like this. Mm -hmm. And it's really pissed off China because this was a soft power propaganda opportunity for them. Yes. So really, in order to kind of back off on that, Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have brought any attention to it. 
Yeah. But they actually chose a Uyghur person to light the Olympic torch, which pisses off, pissed off everyone. Yeah. It's literally a slap in the face. It's not even running cover. It's saying, we don't give a shit yeah. what you think about our human rights abuses. We will do whatever we want. Pin cue the pan to every worst dictator in the world of in the course. crowd by the way yeah it's appalling and it really is i read a lot of good opinion pieces hearkening back to the 1930s olympics and hitler's germany yeah it's where it, who would have thought in this day and age with freedom of information we can see what happens we can talk about what happens we have video evidence anecdotal evidence from people around the world that there's a current genocide happening in china and we're running the olympics there. i know and thomas bach standing there with the olympic torch giving the middle finger to everyone in the entire world should have his his western citizenship revoked he by should. the way he should be in in jail for uh, being an accomplice to war crimes i agree so we're we're living in this world right now and it's kind of insane to me but yeah. i'm glad to see the negative coverage of it yeah but one thing that really pissed me off was china said that they would punish anyone in accordance with the law if they spoke about anything political or any rumors things like this which means that the olympians can't be talking about the genocide and stuff sure, like this sure. keep politics out of the olympics they say yeah that's what that that's what china says but what are who they ran doing with here this torch who ran with that torch this guy is you know there was that um um in 2020 between uh, India and China, there was a border skirmish in the Galwan Valley. Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce yeah. it. Galwan Valley. Yeah. yeah. Basically, Indian troops and Chinese troops engaged, and it was the first time ever, I think, that bullets have been fired in that particular mm -hmm. area in the LAC. And one of the torchbearers there is one of the soldiers that was injured during that conflict. He's a war hero. He's a now. war hero for killing Indians. Right. Okay. Yes. On the border. On the border. Of, and, of India. <laughs> of, yeah. Well, actually, in it's India. In, it's in India. Because the whole thing kicked off because of China's salami slicing yes. tactics, where they're kind of encroaching on this disputed ground. Right. Okay. They keep pushing further and further. They'll right. go in a couple of meters, then they'll build a building. Yes. Right. They go in a, a couple more meters. They'll build they do, a camp. They do that in Bhutan as well. And Bhutan can't even fight back. Yeah. India at least has an army. So what hap what's happening in back. essence is that uh, mm. China's expanding its border into disputed territory yep all over that region western china yeah so india's like f off you know yeah. and they started having these skirmishes yeah what why would they do why would they do something like this this guy potentially killed injured indian people right yes in a conflict on the border well at least it was part of the skirmish yeah part of the skirmish. now is a war hero now it's a freaking war hero carrying the torch so I'm i sure thought india's I... gonna love this in, well good thing they diplomatically boycott my problem with this is why did you say again rules don't apply to the chinese government yeah they can just change everything at, at, a, at a whim keep yeah. politics out of this by the way a war hero from an, a very contentious conflict that we had with another nation very recently is going to be the torchbearer. Yeah. Now I, that's, thought, I thought politics were supposed to stay out of it. Political is all, the, all hell. Yeah. Anyway, that's kind of interesting that <laughs> that made it in there. What else do we have lined up for the uh, whole Olympics? Oh, we got thing? more. Oh, we do, do we? Yeah. Good stuff. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. It's getting Seeing there. a lot of uh, great Wumo in the chat, by the way. It's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Welcome, guys. Huaying. Yeah. Huaying Guanling. Okay. Are you sure there's something else coming? Oh, there is. Okay. Oh, there we go. oh, yeah, of course. How can we forget this? By the way, NOS, fantastic publication, fantastic news outlet. Netherlands. You gotcha. remember remember last last week we spoke about that whole, the, the lid being blown off the, the um, funding of that big um, university in in Holland, in the ne Nederlands, sorry, Netherlands. Netherlands, yeah. Um, and it was being funded by China to basically say that um, China has got no human rights abuses type thing. They blew the lid on that. So what happens when they are trying to do a live? <laughs> Let's see what happens when they do a live stream in China, a live well, broadcast. Live broadcast. So they, we got to set They're this allowed up. to do this. What they're doing is um, the the opening ceremony is still going on at this point. Hadn't even finished the opening ceremony, and the guys just on the street there to talk about you know, the Olympics and the opening ceremony. So let's watch a little bit what happens here. Little and little onze correspondent Sjoerd ten Daa. Sjoerd, jij staat vlak bij het stadion. Uh, wat gaat China de komende uren laten zien? Ja, Hey, shut down, Igor. One chance I saw Simeon Blo. Yeah, we worden hier inmiddels je merkt het al weggetrokken. Um, we zijn net ook al bij een ander gebied weggezet. Dus ik vrees dat wij later even bij je moeten terugkomen. Ja, dat kan wel. 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 Dat k
We gaan wel even met de Ja. 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 Yeah. <laughs> we we know that all too well. In yeah, China, we do. By the way, um, you know, since I can understand uh, quite a bit, he's he's not saying anything political. I only he's... I only understand the Chinese. <laughs> it's yeah. funny. Well, she basically is like, um, okay, so uh, what what can we expect to see? Like you're standing there outside the stadium, yeah. you know, and the opening ceremony is just finishing or whatever. Mm -hmm. What can we expect to see in the, the coming hours or whatever? And then this. We call him like a Bawan, basically. He's yeah, like a security guy. He's a security, but he's a uh, he's it's, it's, attached to the police. Oh yeah, he's a he's a, private, he's a volunteer. States. He's he's a volunteer security sure. policeman. But it's government run. Yeah, absolutely. Comes and grabs him and drags him off. Now I've been trying to find out why because they're not filming in a sensitive area. Nope. He was not saying anything political. He's a journalist. Pass. He's fully legal. Vetted, followed. He's not standing in the road. Nope. He's standing on the sidewalk. Okay, and the cameraman, as you can see at the end, is standing like on the path. In he's, the not, he's not in Xinjiang in front of a concentration no. camp. So the speculation is that they didn't want him filming there because it's just a dingy road and they wanted them to be filming in front of like the big fancy stadiums and stuff like that. And that's why they like moved them along. Because he says like, you got to go forward, like one train yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's just kind of ridiculous. <laughs> What do you expect? See that again. Hey, shut down, Igor. Won't you try to see me Yeah, we have been here in Middle East. Merkt het al weggetrokken. We zijn het ook al bij een ander gebied weggezet. Dus ik vrees dat wij later even bij moeten terugkomen. Dat kan maar, ja. I like how he's like, Nika Malia. The reporter speaks great Chinese, by the way. So he's obviously like lives there, or at least. Yeah, he's got a Beijing accent, so. But he's he's trying to say in Dutch as well, like, oh, we're just reporting here, but I'm being dragged away, you yeah. know. Um, and he's also says to the guy, like, we're just we're just like reporting. What's what's yeah. the deal? And then he's like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> Kamala. Yeah. So he's like, yeah. um, so basically, I th I th I see this as either retaliation for the NOS report to be like, mm -hmm. fuck you, we're not going to let you film, <laughs> okay. or also just to just to disrupt any sort of broadcast that's not perfectly aligned with what they think it should be. I yeah. also think they don't didn't realize this is a live broadcast. Yeah. Because, you know, no. like... No, seriously. I don't think they give a shit. No, dude. look, in China, you don't do live broadcasts on the screen. No, you don't. You don't. No. It's, it doesn't happen. It's they too don't, much of a liability. And they don't have that infrastructure. I've never seen live broadcasts off the street in China. It's always they set people up there and they film something, and then it gets edited later and put yeah. up. So these guys probably think that's what's going on here. Sure. They're like, look, they're filming something, but we don't want them to film it here. Let's move them along. They can start over. I know that they do happen if there's enough buffer, like there is. But the, mm. by and large, most yeah. of the news coverage no, is not live. Reporting, I've been on Shenzhen News yeah. quite a few yeah. times. They've got good equipment and stuff, sure, but sure. they don't. They don't do the live broadcast. They right. don't have it's that rare. sort of infrastructure it's out there. It's, it just doesn't seem to happen. Right. I mean, they do live streams with phones and stuff. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, right. you know, that kind of thing. Stand with a microphone. Sure. So I think they probably thought they weren't live. Yeah. I mean, they wouldn't have done that, right, otherwise? I think they would have. Maybe. I don't think they give a shit. Dude. I mean, also... Oh, they... God forbid you disrupt this bullshit foreigner's broadcast. They yeah. don't give a shit. No, and on top of that, they can't understand Dutch, so they probably, like, maybe he's saying something bad. Yep. You never know. it right now. Yeah. Why would he be standing here with all these police cars in the background, right? Yeah. You know, it looks yeah. bad. They'll say, Blah, Khan, like, go, go to a different area. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of interesting to put it in. It was. So, guys, it's time for us to hit the Yamcha section of the show. And for those of you who don't know, this is when we sit and talk and just have a chat with you guys, go through the Super Chats. Um, it stays up for the weekend. If you're watching it live, you get to watch it now on Monday. We remove Yamcha, and then if you've missed it, you can catch it on Patreon. But there's no paywall, so you, if you nope. catch it on the weekend, if you catch it now... The paywall is right. up to you if you're not, if you're not yeah. here. Patreon.com slash ADV podcasts. That's what it is. 